Happy Draft Day Eve WFA. Woo, baby, we're getting close. I am very excited to get on the call of this draft. But before we do that, we have one thing we need to do, and that is do the Season 5 redraft of the WFA. Uh, if you've been watching this series, you know we look back with 2020 vision, see what happened in the draft for that year, and make it a little better. Make it a little... Make it what it should have been if we had known what we know now what would we have done back then so we're gonna go through pick by pick just like always and see what these players have done since coming into the league and uh what i think these teams should have done so coming off the board first in the season five draft was hollywood mason who has had himself a pretty decent career, but we can do a little bit better than decent. Uh, first overall in the redraft is Brian Craven, the safety from Oregon. Uh, Brian Craven, at his peak, is a dominating safety. He's played for the Voodoo and the Whales, and has they, he's just been dominant on both of those teams. If you remember back to uh, his Season 5 performance in his rookie year, uh, he was absolutely dominant all the way through the playoffs. Uh, he leads the league in interceptions all time with 24. Definitely a guy that Miami would love to have right now. It's deja vu all over again. I'm replacing a Marshalls wide receiver. This time they selected Matthew Slynn, who has done little to nothing in the league. So we're going to switch it up with someone who is really, really good. Uh, Excess Denebola. Top five in receiving all time, uh, 26 touchdowns, and he's done it on less receptions than guys like Jefferson Fitzgerald and Travis Stafford. So, yeah, Denevola, one of the best receivers, like surprisingly, uh, and I would gladly have him on the Omaha Marshals for getting another receiver in that room. Just so, one of these has got to work eventually, right? Come on. <laughs> Much like any offensive lineman pick in this era, I'm going to say no to Jeremiah Calhoun just because he's not really going to be a huge difference maker, especially when you're only going to pay him out of bronze contract. So at number three, I have the Lancers selecting Malachi Fist. I don't need to tell you what a Fist brother can do for you on your defense, but he is a very dominant guy. Uh, <laughs> he's number two in sacks. Uh, only behind the great Kyle Lockhart, and he is just a, a guy that should not be underestimated, and the Lancers definitely needed that at this time, and if they would have had Fist on their team, they would have just been incredible. Las Vegas Gamblers up next, and this begins the... There's a lot of good linebackers, and they were all kind of drafted in the first round, so there's going to be a little bit of shaking up of the guys as we go through the rankings. Um, but uh, they originally drafted Freddie Trammell, who you will see later in this draft, meaning he's probably pretty good. Uh, but I'm going to go with a guy who is slightly better, and that's Crash James. Uh, Crash James, great, great player. He's been close to the top in tackles uh, for a couple of seasons. He's number nine all time, and of course, uh, these all time uh, stats start in season five, so it's basically since his rookie year. Um, and he is a guy that's just a tackle machine. He gets the job done, uh, and putting that on the Memphis defense would, uh, on the <laughs> Las Vegas defense, I'm thinking of uh, Freddie Trammell's current team, uh, but put him, putting him on that defense with LaQuendra's Friedman, with JT McIntyre, uh, with, with Doug Barney, this would be a really good defense if they could have had him uh, in there. There were only two rookie starting quarterbacks, and only one of them was worth his snot. Uh, Art Vandelay, uh, he is going to be playing for the Swamp Foxes just like he did in real life. Uh, really, in, in, his, in his couple seasons as a full-time starter, this man is dominant. He was an MVP candidate. Uh, he's back in, an, in a great offense for him in the Wolfpack, so we'll have to see once he gets another run with this team if he can get them. It's that playoff success they've been looking for. But Art Vandelay... Uh, great, great quarterback. Another team that surprisingly got it right was the Tri-Cities Fever. This is a team that didn't get much right. 
uh, as uh, Dave can tell you. But this team, absolutely awful in many a a facets of the game, including their quarterback, Daniel Bryan, who I'd love to replace once again. But I can't because no one else is worth it. So we're going to stick with their original pick, Mordecai Fist, a dominant defensive lineman. That would be a really great, uh, uh, he was a really great addition to this team, and I'm going to keep him right there. And let's make it three in a row with Jonathan Bravo going to the Reapers. Um, this one might be a bit, bit of a surprise, as he is definitely not near the top in interceptions in his career, but he's second in pass defenses, which is really, really impressive. So uh, I'm going to stick with Jonathan Bravo here. Uh, also two touchdowns, which is an underrated part of getting those picks. Um, yeah, so keep him there. It was definitely a position of need at the time. They definitely uh, got a lot out of him. So we're going to stick with Jonathan Bravo right here. Another receiver that's done some good things, uh, but ultimately there are better players at the position is Sam Blotner. He's had a little bit of time where he's not been uh, a main target in an offense, so uh, he's going to get pushed to the side a little bit. We're going to go with somebody else that's going to help the Cougars a little more, uh, and this is going to be Jared Willis. Uh, Jared Willis, uh, as a wide receiver, is just a great force. He was with the goals for a long time. He's with the, the Grizzlies before that. Um, he's a guy that's going to get the ball and do a lot with it. So uh, definitely uh, taking Jared Willis here uh, for, for this team. Gilbert Wiggins was selected by the Fury at pick nine. Uh, he was put in as a silver, so at least they tried to get the most out of him, but uh, I'm going to go with somebody different. I'm going to go with DJ Barnes. Uh, DJ Barnes at, on, at the safety position is a really, really good player. Uh, he's been gold for a lot of his career. Uh, he's ninth all-time in interceptions, um, so he's always around the ball, always making plays. He's also in the top, he's number seven in tackles, so this is a guy, really, really good safety. Um, if it wasn't for Craven, he'd be the best in the class, uh, so definitely taking Barnes right there. So, Smith did the right thing. I'm as surprised as you are. Hugh Hugo, number nine in sacks. Um, pretty solid pass rusher so you can pick him up again and that's all I'm gonna say about that originally in this draft the Lancers selected Zadarius Lockhart who has done little to nothing so let's go with Bluto Blutarski 17th in tackles he is sixth in interceptions and he is just a really good player 28th in pass deflection so he's a little bit all over the board but I'm putting him slightly behind Barnes and Craven, but still really good. Definitely going to take him right here, and he's going to be a starting safety right away. So making that guy make a difference. So the Colorado Clash took uh, Marlon Marshall, and that's not been a terrible pick as Marlon Marshall is top 25 in yards. But let's go to someone who is very close to being top 10 at number 11, and that's Coulter Hands. Holter hands just over 3,000 yards and 22 touchdowns for his career. Uh, yes, he did play for the Corn Kings, but even still, he's had a pretty solid career overhaul and just put him on this team. Um, and it would, I think it would give him a better shot at being good in a, in a better offense early on. Um, so yeah, Colter hands. Let's keep the boyhood dream alive of me getting every Molinao in existence. Uh, I originally drafted Shane Delahart, who was a pretty solid linebacker for me, uh, and then he kind of got cold. He didn't play as much for other teams. Liam Molinao, on the other hand, uh, really good player. Uh, he's, he played for the Tribe for a lot of his career, um, and so far it's been a really good one. He is number 12 in tackles, um, so I'd happily have that on my Crabs defense. Now let's take a look at tight end and Mike Coco, uh, number 23 in receiving and among tight ends he's in the top five for sure, um, maybe top three. Uh, so he's one of the best tight ends there's ever been and he's kind of gone under the radar until last year. Um, I don't even think he played that much for the Tribe. Uh, he's been making a name for himself in Louisiana so uh, definitely 
is the correct pick and I'm not going to change it because that was a good a good move for them. But what wasn't a good move was selecting Jack Micro at running back. Now, to be fair, there wasn't a ton of talent in this running back draft and um, Micro was in and out of a lot of lineups during his career. Uh, but we're going to go somewhere else, somewhere where you can get a little bit better work. That's Corey Tucker. Uh, Corey Tucker is a mainstay in the Jamaica organization. Um, he, he got moved a couple times and then he just keeps coming back. And he's number 11 uh, in sacks with 28 and he's tied with guys like Hugh Hugo and Jeff Gallery and Mar Rivers. So he's right up in there uh, with some of the better pass rushers of all time, ahead of Mike Ripley even, uh, one, of, one of the legends in the game. So uh, Corey Tucker, definitely a great pass rusher and would have been really good if he had made it to Memphis. Another linebacker that gets bumped down just a little bit, William Thompson, great community member, uh, will be replaced with Freddie Trammell. Both of these guys, great linebackers, but Freddie Trammell has done just a little bit more, so he's going to sneak up into uh, the Falcons organization, but certainly wasn't a bad pick by them. Now, Jake, are you going to try to get this pick kept too? I certainly hope not. Uh, Flash Hendricks, uh, one of the biggest busts that you could possibly have. To be fair, he wasn't put in a great position. Uh, going to the Wolfpack uh, right before they hit on their uh, classic offense, let's just say. Uh, so he got run out of town very quickly. Uh, let's replace him with someone who's actually going to play on the team, uh, Dion Ramsey, uh, who is a cornerback that got a lot of... He's been underrated, so he's gotten hasn't gotten a lot of love. Uh, but he's a guy that's made some really good plays. He's gotten a lot of turnovers, which is what you want to see, and he's been playing for uh, the Fury, so he hasn't been on the best of teams, but he still finds his way into making plays, so that's, that's a plus on his radar for sure. And third in our trio of running back failures is Greg Gaines, uh, currently, uh, currently going to be starting for Pottsville as far as we can tell, but uh, uh, yeah, we're not going to do that again. Uh, we're going to go with Larry Brothers at tight end. I know Jake probably would want me to pick him for him, but uh, Larry Brothers, a solid, solid tight end, uh, would have made the Grizzlies organization much better as they were rolling with uh, Sean Nicholson at the time. Uh, so put Larry Brothers in that offense, and maybe, uh, maybe you win some more games. Now, my man, Joel, I'm not allowing you to pick Malachi Fist anymore this time, so we're going to give you somebody else. That's going to be William Thompson, the linebacker. Uh, like I said, when we went over when he was originally drafted, pretty solid linebacker. He's up there uh, in tackles, and uh, he's a guy that's always been around, making plays, doing what he's got to do, and I, I think any of these linebackers would have been great. Um, so it's, it goes Crash James at number 9 in tackles, Liam Molinow is 12, Freddie Trammell 14, and uh, William Thompson at 20. So these are all guys that have made a lot of plays in the league. Um, Thompson just happens to be the lowest, but still a really good player. Would have been a great, great addition to a very interesting voodoo defense. So going from one LSU wide receiver to another, access Denebola to Marlon Marshall. Man, if we had seen these guys actually play in college, that would have been crazy. But, um, yeah, Marlon Marshall, like, even though he's the last pick in this redraft, um, he's still a very solid wide receiver. Um, and while, while the Vipers are probably upset that they can't draft their boy, um, getting a guy who is top 25 in receiving yards uh, and pretty high up there in scores as well like that's not too bad and put him in this offense he might have been able to do just as well as Dana Bull has been able to do so um, yeah so Marlon Marshall not a bad replacement for uh, for this man right here and yeah so that's the pick right there so that is it for the redraft thank you for watching this far if you enjoyed the video make sure to leave it a like we really really appreciate it um, but yeah so now it's officially draft season it's coming up really soon make sure to join us for the live stream we're going to be hitting all five rounds of the draft uh that's gonna be insane um never been done before 
So uh, we'll be very excited. You'll be able to see all of your WFAN favorites, uh, some special coach interviews, um, really exciting stuff for this year's draft. I'm very excited. I can't, I can't even put it into words, really. I'm just really excited. So Saturday night, 7 o'clock, get ready. It's going to be a great, great evening for all of us. Um, and we can't, we can't wait to see you there. So uh, thank you very much and see you on Saturday.